Okay, so today I had a little bit of time to tinker and we're going to be doing a quick unboxing and first impressions of the Z5 and FTZ adapter. See you in a second. Okay, let's open it up. So it's just going to be a quick unboxing. You'll see your normal stuff in here. Now, I did pause the video because I had the warranty card with a serial number I put off to the side. <clears throat> this is a US version. So this is what you should expect to get. You get your cards, you get your books, okay? You get the camera body and you get a bunch of stuff over here. Now I'm gonna pull it all out and we'll go over it one by one real quick. Okay, oh, that's about it for that box. Say goodnight, you're easy. Okay, so first thing first. Like I said, we've got our manuals, which I tend to like to use the online manuals anyways because they update them via firmware. Right, no big, same old, same old. We've got our charger. And this comes with a universal plug that you can get for European style plugs or US style plugs. And hopefully this one actually has a plug to it. We will find out. I believe that's the only, yes. Okay, so I was making sure there was no like USB adapters or anything like that. So you can do a, a, a charge out of here, but this is your standard old charger. Now here's the interesting thing. This is what I wanted to see right here. This is the new ENEL 15C. This battery right here is going to be the difference between the, the Z5 and some other options out there. And we'll talk about that. But it's my understanding and I have to do some testing that this will charge while the camera is running. So it'll charge in camera while the camera is running. Now that doesn't mean it's gonna supply 100% power, but that means it should extend the life of the battery. My understanding, okay. Standard plug for US, check. Got a little worried there for a second, didn't see it. Strap, never use them. USB-C with 3.0, it's blue, so USB-C 3.0, that's good. Now I don't see any HDMI cables or anything. Now for the camera itself, it is, it's a hefty camera. It's, it's a little bit heavier than I was expecting to be honest with you. Let's take a quick look. Now this is a, I guess what you'd call a borrowed copy, if you will. So here it is. This thing looks good, solid. I'm starting to remember my Z6 now a little bit better. I mean, it's got a good, it's got a good grip to it. I feel like I don't need the bottom grip as much as I do with my, with my Z50. Now, buttons are lined up exactly like the Z6. So a lot of this is the same. Top view, we have the control went to the right, much like the Z50. In fact, just for the hell of it, since we've got the top down, I'm gonna go ahead and do this as well. Give you an idea of the size difference, if much of any. Now this is where you'll start seeing the difference is the thickness. You're gonna have more ports than you do on the Z50. And I don't wanna make this a direct comparison yet. I just wanted to give you an idea of what's there. Obviously you have the flash on this one. And um, we're gonna put the Z50 off to the side for now and we're gonna finish the tour on this one. So this one has plugs right here. This is your remote control plug, your mini HDMI, and your USB type C. Now I kind of wish this was down here, but that is what it is because I can see myself using these two ports a lot more than the remote, but I understand it for weather sealing, right? If you're, the, if you're a photographer, this comes up and that's the only thing, these two are protected. So I get it. The chances of you using 
HDMI and USB in the elements are a lot lighter, but if you're using a monitor, then now you've got all three ports exposed. So my argument would be, we're not gonna see a lot of use for the remote. We're gonna see more use for the HDMI and USB-C. So my argument would have been, put the HDMI at the bottom, that way it's opened. That's what I see for the most used port. But once again, this is more geared toward photography. So I think they're, they're thinking, or maybe just internally, the only way they can get it to fit is doing that. Now you also have a headphone and mic. Now, if you notice the mic, they consider that, that's gonna be most used, that's down there, and a headphone jack. So um, I've used the headphone jack a few times just to make sure audio sounded good while I was recording behind the camera but other than that it is what it is now front you've got your, your function two buttons you've got your dials we went over the top already it's it's identical to the z6 I'm going to be putting one of those cheesy little little reflectors up here so I can see what's going on when I use this for video and I am going to be using this for video and I'm going to talk about why I think this is actually a great idea for video, but I gotta do a few tests first to make sure I'm not full of it, which usually I am. So, bottom, standard affair, battery port. It's got the knockout for the dummy battery wire, which is great. Video card slots. Look, there's two. Two. Okay. That should make a few people happy. I believe these are UHS-2s. I'll have to verify that. I think it's the same as my D780, but I'll have to verify that. Now, controls feel good. I mean, there's no complaints here. They're tactile. You can feel them click. This you can even get to. I've got medium size hands. You can get to and control scene if you really want to switch back and forth. I love the fact that you can do video with the toggle. That is amazing. That's good stuff. I like the display being right there. I like the play button being separated more than the Z50. What they did with the Z50, they put everything on the other side. It's, I, I wish they would have kind of fit, fit them in right there or done something in that area besides the monitor tab. Okay, but fit and finish, looks good, feels good. It's heavier than I thought, but still a lot lighter than my Z780 or my D780, sorry. Yeah, I mean, it, it's... It's solid. It's got a great deep grip, which I never got with any of my um, any of my Sony's. Now, let's take a quick look. There is your sensor. Okay, clean looking sensor. Looks good. Question is, is how will it perform? We will find out. I'm gonna do a macro on this, see how well we do here. Look at that. Okay. And I'm still working on these unboxing videos, figuring out the best settings. My last unboxing video was, uh, the focus was kind of jumpy, but. It's got the EVF where you should expect it, which if you're a left-handed shooter, by the way, Totally le or left-handed. I, I am left-handed, but if you're left-eye dominant, I really do like these EVFs more than most. Um, I noticed the new Sony put theirs all the way off to the right, their subcompact one, and I, that's just miserable for me. I know I'm in the minority of that, but if you're left-eye dominant, Nikon's got a. I mean, they push it out really far, which helps out, especially if you got a large schnoz like I do. So this is the key to this camera and your Z6s and everything else. But it's my understanding that the Z6 does not charge while recording with this battery. I believe this is the only body that will do that. I'm gonna test that out and kind of, I don't have a Z6 to test out with, but Ricky Talks, I believe, has already talked about this battery and he has some testing on it. And, and I'm pretty sure that this battery only charges on this camera while in use. So I say that, which is kind of strange because you think that's a, it's it, one, it's great for long, for long exposures and for multiple exposures and everything else, but it's also good for video. So I am going to test something out super goofy with this for video to prove or to disprove my idea about if this will be good for a 4K recorder. And 
I'm going to be comparing it to the Z50 mostly for that comparison. So, all right, I'm going to cut out and I'm going to get a lens on here and charge it up and we're going to see what happens. All right, I'm going to show you something actually. Let me show you this. Hold on. This is my idea. Don't laugh at me. Because there's a crop in 4K already, I am actually going to try this goofy little pancake with the Z5. And you may think, blasphemy. But this is very specifically for recording 4K only. Um, a few people have verified or at least told me, and I need to verify it, that this has a 1.7 crop in 4K. And if you put a DX lens on there, it stays a 1.7 crop. So as long as the image quality is okay, you can use your DX lenses on the full frame. What advantages do you get to that? We'll find out if there's any at all. But I have a few ideas and hopefully they will work. Okay, I'm going to jump back over. Okay, so hoping the tabletop review went all right, or at least the tabletop unboxing. I'm still working on that, so bear with me if you would. Um, this is the camera, right? Hopefully you got enough of it on the, tab on, the, on the tabletop when I was unboxing it. But first impressions, I don't have too many, to be honest. The battery was almost completely dead, so I was only able to go in and take a look at some of the menus. Um, as far as software, it looks like the Z6 and close to the, to the Z50. So everything looks familiar. I'm happy with that. That's what I want. That's the point of it. Now, as far as fit and finish, it's a Z6 or a Z7. I mean, if you've seen one, then it's the same. If you have not, the build quality is great. I know that this doesn't have as much metal in it. I believe the magnesium alloy, if you will. Um, I don't believe it's it's as rigid, but you can't you don't notice that when you pick it up. There's not an an, an obvious like oh this is definitely a cheaper camera. It still has a good amount of heft to it for a mirrorless and for me coming from the Z50. Now does it have heft compared to the 780? Absolutely not. This thing is light as a feather. The Z5 and the Z series. This right here, you see how it's protruded. It works great for me because I am a left-eyed photographer. So that helps out a lot. It brings it away from the monitor. I don't feel like I'm smooshing my face into it every time I'm trying to take a picture. Um, if you're left-eyed dominant, that is something to consider. Um, I really like the Fuji films and I really like the, you know, a lot of DSLRs, but sometimes they put that viewfinder in there or that opt you know if it's an optical or if it's a evf like they make it flush and it makes it uncomfortable i mean it it's already with those cameras hard to use that this joystick on my d500 was almost impossible to use for me so i really didn't care about the joystick i had to use the d-pad anyways because that was out of position for me so anyways i'll let you know how this thing performs I'll let you know more, but first impressions, this thing is designed very well. It's designed with ergonomics in mind. It's designed with usability in mind. And it's designed to work. You can just tell there's no, there, there's no fiddling that'll have to happen when you pick up a camera like this. Once you learn this system, and I like... I can tell you Nikon for this, the one thing I can say about Nikon, even though they had a hard time with video, they stay true to a lot of their ergonomics through the years with the dials and where everything's at and kind of the fit and finish and as well, the, as, well as the menu systems. They've always had, to me, they've always had a very good menu system, a very understandable menu system. Um, when I used my Sonys, I liked them, but man, you had to know what you were looking for. You had to know what you're looking for. So anyways, enough of that. Um, yeah. Let me know what you think of the, of the, of the unboxing. Uh, like I said, I'm still working on it. Give me a thumbs up if you like it. Subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Links are in the description for stuff I use to make the video. And as usual, have an amazing day.